Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Holistic Pharmacy Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Jenna Carmichael, and today I am here with our guest, Beth Shirley, um, who's going to help us kind of decipher nitric oxide. We're going to talk about how it works with immune health, and I'm so excited to have you here with us today, Beth. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, Beth, all of us who kind of work in this holistic space, we, we all have a little bit of a journey on how we got here. So why don't you give us a little bit about your background and how you kind of came to be this expert on nitric oxide? Well, I was a pharmacist for 20 years and I went into pharmacy thinking I was going to help people. But after 20 years of seeing people come back sicker and sicker and on more and more drugs, in 1997, I became a certified clinical nutritionist. So I actually became the pharmacist to go to if you wanted to get off your drugs or not even go down that road to begin with. And so, and, and my, my personal journey to that is like when I was 35, I was really depressed and I went to the doctor and all they had to offer me were antidepressants. And I fought that for a couple of years. And then when I was 37, I went back to the doctor and I succumbed and I started taking Paxil because I didn't know what else to do because I was depressed. I was irritable and blah, 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 you know, the whole, the whole thing. And when I hit 40, I read a book, what your doctor may not tell you about menopause that talked about natural progesterone. And I started doing the natural progesterone within nine months. This is when I got off the Paxil and realized actually I had a progesterone deficiency, not a Paxil deficiency. So that and the CCN part coincided together. So since then, I've been like helping people down healthier roads supporting systems, not doing anti this, anti that. And nitric oxide, the miracle molecule touches every single physiological function. And in 2009, I started working with a nitric oxide researcher and helping to formulate, you know, the first really big nitric oxide product that was an arginine or citrulline. And so since 2009, I've been in the nitric oxide space. In the last three years, I've been the executive director of the Berkeley Life Professional Scientific Advisory Board, doing all their research, their writing, their education, their webinars. And so it's through this mechanism of um, working with these researchers, you now have all this amazing knowledge about this molecule and, um, you know, how it affects our health. Nitric oxide touches every single physiological function. It governs circulation and microcirculation. Without, if, if you don't have adequate circulation and microcirculation, cells, tissues die. Oxygen can't be delivered glucose, nutrients, and just as importantly, debris can't be carried away. So the hemoglobin requires nitric oxide to be connected to it in order to release oxygen to the tissues. So you could be even be super saturated with oxygen. And if you're nitric oxide deficient, you're not going to be delivering that oxygen. The GLUT4 receptor that translocate to bring glucose into the cell is nitric oxide modulated. Our, our sexual health in men and women is nitric oxide mediated. Because we all know about the PDE5 inhibitors, the Viagra, the Cialis. But they, they actually need nitric oxide in order to be able to work. So that's why they only work in about 50% of the people. If you don't have enough nitric oxide to get the erection, those PDE5 inhibitors can't allow that erection to hang around longer. Mm -hmm. And as women, we need the nitric oxide too in order to be able to feel, to respond. 
Lubrication is nitric oxide mediated. So as women, if we can't feel, if we can't respond and we're not lubricating, do you think we even think about sex? No. Probably not so much, huh? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And I think you hear a lot about nitric oxide and heart health as well. Right. Nitric oxide, is the, the electron transport chain, the mitochondria, use nitric oxide in order to recouple it. So when the electron transport chain is uncoupled, meaning the, the electron does not go down to water, it goes down to superoxide, it's uncoupled. Um, the, the mitochondria can take that nitrite and recouple that electron transport chain, increasing our production of energy. The, the heart cells have way more mitochondria than any other cells in our body. They, cause it, that heart is pumping 24, seven, 365. Mm -hmm. So it needs energy in order to be able to do that. So we make nitric oxide through two different pathways. One is through the NOS, nitric oxide synthase pathway, which takes arginine and oxidizes it into nitric oxide. And the other is through the nitrate to nitrite to nitric oxide pathway. So by the time we're 40, this NOS pathway only functions about 50%. And by the time we're 60, it's only functioning about 15%. That's why cardiovascular disease is a number one killer. And why it's so essential to support that nitrate to nitrite to nitric oxide pathway, because this can actually help you make your nitric oxide. And the beautiful thing about nitrate supplementation, it, it can actually help support and recouple that NOS enzyme, increasing nitric oxide production through that. So there's many ways that our nitric oxide production gets impaired. So age, we talked about that. Mm -hmm. uh, lack of exercise, uh, the standard American diet, the void of essential cofactors and nutrients and nitrate rich veggies, um, drugs, antibiotics, antidepressants, birth control pills, NSAIDs, PPIs, all of these interfere with that NOS enzyme and uncouple it. EMFs, we're swimming in this sea of EMFs. EMFs increase oxidative stress, which uncouple that NOS enzyme. And so what I mean by uncoupling the NOS enzyme, instead of handing that electron down to the arginine and then to the nitric oxide, it actually hands it down to oxygen and makes superoxide, which then oxidative stress even uncouples it even more. Glyphosate, which is everywhere, even, yeah. even in the organic vegetables, because it's in the air, uncouples that NOS enzyme. Genetic SNPs, NOS SNPs, any SNP that increases oxidative stress, your SOD SNPs, catalase, anything like if, you're M, if you have any MTHFR SNPs, you're by definition nitric oxide deficient. So your QDPR, your DHFR, and a big one, stress. Stress uncouples that NOS enzyme. That's why when we're stressed, we get sick easier because it's uncoupling INOS, the inducible NOS. When we're stressed, we have more cardiovascular complications. We have hypertension, MIs, strokes, because it's uncoupling that ENOS, the endothelial NOS. So that's why it's so imperative for us to support that nitrate to nitrite to nitric oxide pathway. And I think also looking at other lifestyle factors as well, you know, to help with that, right? Because you were just saying how stress is such a big, a big factor in this as well. You know, can we support 
that pathway through stress management on top of it to do, to help holistically the whole patient, right. From a whole, all sides, right. <laughs> That's the goal, right. <laughs> right. And the food, like the nitrate rich veggies, these are your, your arugula, your kale, your butter lettuce, celery, bok choy, beets, Adding some of those into your diet a couple of times a day will actually help increase your nitric oxide. And, and we, can, we can test to see whether you're, you're optimizing that. There's some, like Berkeley Life has these test strips. They're saliva test strips. And they test the nitrite concentration of your saliva. Because we consume the nitrites, they get absorbed, they circulate around, and they get concentrated in the salivary glands. The salivary glands release the nitrate and we've got good bacteria on our tongue that will reduce that nitrate to nitrite, which is the immediate precursor to nitric oxide. And so that salivary test strip will test the nitrite concentration of your, your saliva. So you can test whether you're getting enough through your vegetables or whether it might behoove you to, to supplement with a clinically proven nitrate supplement. And in your experience, do you find that, um, it is easy to supplement through the diet to, if someone was deficient already, um, could you through diet come back up to a sufficient state depending on certain factors, or do you find that it's, um, with a lot of things, it's a little easier to use supplementation. Well, the DASH diet, the dietary approaches to stop hypertension has about 12 to 1500 milligrams of nitrate per day. So if you follow the DASH diet, you can supplement enough to keep those levels up. But that's kind of a challenging diet to, to adhere to. So I find that actually adding a couple of capsules of the Berkeley Life, this actually helps your body replete these nitrate nitrite stores and get it down the right path. And what about, um, so I, I live in Northeastern Pennsylvania. And so, in, and I have a, a background in cancer. Um, that's my professional background. And so um, when I talk, think about dietary and I think about nitrates and nitrites and things like immediately smoked and preserved meats comes to mind. And so right. how, how does that come or how, how does that affect um, that balance? Well, that whole idea that these foods contribute to cancer has been disproven. Okay, we get most of our nitrates actually through our vegetables. Like maybe in a hot dog or so, there might be 10 milligrams of nitrate nitrite added, where a big bowl of spinach has um, 300, 400 milligrams. We get most of nitrates through these vegetables. And if you look at the ingredients of these preserved foods, you will see um, isomers of a vitamin C or a vitamin E, because they've shown that adding an antioxidant to these nitrates, nitrites, it, they will not form the nitrosamines. So this nitrosamine and cancer connection with these foods was made in the lab, not in real life situations. And in fact, if you get these foods, they say no nitrates, nitrites added, what they have added is celery salt, which has more nitrates, nitrites than if they would have just added it. <laughs> so there's, you know, a lot of a lot of misinformation around the nitric oxide world mm -hmm. and it just yeah. keeps getting repeated. Yeah. And I think that that's a really interesting thought too, because when I, when I first kind of sat down to think about what I know about nitric oxide from my training and my pharmacy training, you know, I, I remembered the, <laughs> 
the PD five inhibitors, you know, um, and that's right. pretty much the thing that I think of when I think of nitric oxide. And so, um, so with our discussion, kind of talking about how immune system, how our immune system is supported or, you know, those sorts of things with nitric oxide, um, what do we know about nitric oxide in regard to our immune health and how does that support it? And potentially if there's a deficiency in place, because it sounds like we have many, many reasons out there in our everyday lives to have potential deficiencies, how does that, you know, how do we see this effect knowing also too, with our, you know, pandemic history right now, how right. do we, you know, how do we know, or how does this all come together when we're talking about immune health? Well, nitric oxide is antimicrobial. It's antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, antipathogenic. So it's part of the, part of our immune response, the INOS, the inducible NOS makes the, nit the nitric oxide to go after these pathogens. But the ENOS, the endothelial NOS, has to be functioning too. The, the circulation and microcirculation has to be open in order for, for all our immune cells to get in there and do what they need to do. So all of the comorbid conditions connected with the, what's going on right now are actually nitric oxide deficient states. Age, we talked about that, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, all of these are nitric oxide deficient states. And then what this virus does, the spike protein, it attacks the hemoglobin and it oxidizes the Fe3 plus, the ferrous iron to Fe, no, the ferrous iron, the Fe2 plus to ferric iron, Fe3 plus. This ferric iron can't carry oxygen. That's why we get the hypoxia. Nitric oxide can scavenge this Fe3+, Fe3 but then it takes it out of circulation from keeping our circulation and microcirculation healthy, keeping the clotting down. So that's why we're seeing all of these um, effects like long haul system that, that we're seeing like people's they've got little micro clots in their capillaries. Cells are dying. Cells can't be more than two cells away from a micro capillary. So when it, when a capillary is clotted up by a little clot, these cells are dying. Like people aren't thinking clearly. You've got to have good circulation in the brain. Nitric oxide is essential for, for gut health. And we've got 80, you know, 75 to 80% of our immune system in our gut. The nitrite and nitric oxide actually help protect the tight junctions in the gut, in the brain. The nitrates help feed and support the communities of the microbiome. So good gut health means good brain health means good immune health, the gut brain immune complex. They all go together. So we're seeing with the shots too, because they're, they're, they're shooting people full of the spike protein. And I've got a lot of people now that are having all these kind of long haul sy symptoms from the shots. Mm. They're not thinking correctly. They, they have headaches. They have fatigue. Things aren't working right. Mm -hmm. So that's a nitric oxide deficiency. And if so, you know, if we have the tissue that has that has died though. I mean, we wouldn't expect to recover, would we? Or is that a possibility? With, with, the, with the body- Pepper supplementation. Yeah, with like the that, body, right? giving the body what it needs helps it recover. Mm -hmm. But you've got to have the circulation and microcirculation open. Because look at when you've got some, some dead cells and tissues, 
you've got to be able to clean up this debris. Mm -hmm. but, but if your microcirculation is, is, is clotted up, there's no way you can, like, the cells can get in there and start cleaning it up. So you've got to open up that circulation and microcirculation in order to heal. Mm -hmm. Our stem cells, stem cells are, are cells within our body that are required for healing. And they, and they require nitric oxide in order to go where they need to go and do what they need to do. Mobilization and differentiation. So nitric oxide plays a role in all healing. So you weren't kidding when you said it affects all, it <laughs> all the does. systems. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you give me a topic and I can, act, I can, <laughs> I'll explain to you, you know, the biochemistry behind where nitric oxide is connected to this mm -hmm. anxiety and depression. A lot of times they're mediated by BDNF, low levels of brain derived neurotropic factor, which is nitric oxide mediated. But nitrates actually increase the production of BH4, tetrahydrobiopterin. So this BH4 not only is the essential cofactor to keep the NOS enzyme coupled and making nitric oxide, not superoxide, BH4 is required for you to make your dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, epinephrine, melatonin. So even by upping your nitrates, you're going to improve your mood. You're going to improve your cognition. The brain is only 2% of our body weight, but it requires about 25% of the oxygen that our whole body uses. Remember I said the, the hemoglobin needs a nitric oxide in order to deliver that oxygen. The brain makes 20% more nitric oxide than any other place in our body. And that's because that brain needs circulation. Lots of dementia is caused by not feeding these cells in our brain. They're not getting what they need. Cells are dying. So many things. <laughs> so there's just, there's so, you know, it, it really is one of those things that, you know, when you really take a step back and look at how does this one, one molecule, this one thing really impact the way that, you know, your bodily systems work and or not work. <laughs> we're seeing it right here. You know, you know, I hear so many things about going that with the brain, right. Any kind of, you know, fogginess or mental health issue or any sort of, you know, dementia or any things like that, you know, my thought process goes to the prevention, right? So my um, family history, I've got dementia on both sides of my family. And so I think to myself all the time, what are the things that I can do to make sure that my cognition stays as good as it can be for as long as possible. And, you know, here is a way to kind of think about, you know, okay, here's another reason in my check, my checklist of, I'm going to make sure I eat that kale today. I'm going to make sure I get those leafy greens in today to make sure that I am setting my future self up for help with those things. You know, I think cardiovascular disease, of course, is a huge issue in our country and thinking that, oh, if I can eat that kale, if I can have those leafy greens that might actually help with cardiovascular disease as well. And I think I have a background in Western medicine. And I think, you know, a lot of times we talk about, oh, it's diet and lifestyle, diet and lifestyle, but yet what is what that? that <laughs> What does that actually mean? Right. And it's not fun to eat the kale salad when you have the juicy burger and, you know, those sorts of things. But I think that when we're talking to our patients and trying to explain these concepts to them, it can kind of help when we're using that family history, when we're using those 
that motivational type interviewing to kind of find that reason to help that person see that, yes, those behaviors that you're doing right this second, right now matter to your future self. Because if you have those good reserves of nitric oxide, if you continue to have that lifestyle that potentially decreases the amount of stress that you have in your life and those sorts of things that can help with this whole system, as we've seen, because it affects so many other systems in your body. And so I think that that's um, definitely one of the things that I take away from, from hearing all of this, um, all of the factors and all of the things that go into what nitric oxide really does for us. <laughs> well, it just, it just like when you were talking about the cognition, this is so important right now because that's what we're seeing in these long callers. Mm -hmm. People have had the virus. That's what we're seeing. That's what I'm seeing in people that have had the shots. They're not thinking right, mm -hmm. you know, and they're, they're afraid that they're always going to like be like this. But by optimizing the nitric oxide through that nitrate to nitrite to nitric oxide pathway, you're actually down-regulating all these inflammatory cytokines. And we know like when our brain is inflamed, we don't feel good. Neuroinflammation. But optimizing the nitric oxide decreases that neuroinflammation. It also decreases the um, mast cell degranulation. So it's going to decrease the histamine production. Because we all know if we've got allergies, when they're, they're up, we're not thinking right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it down-regulates these inflammatory cytokines, leukotrienes, platelet activating factor, all of these things that impair our cognition that we're seeing now. And I, and I feel like that's definitely something that a lot of people are really concerned about. You know, it's, we're living in a world too, where our brains are the things that make our money, right? <laughs> if we can't function in the way that, you know, if we can't think in a straight pattern. And if we can't, you know, do these jobs that our economy is based on, which is everybody's brain power, that's really distressing for people for certain. And it, and I, you know, I, I've heard many stories about people who, you know, they just want to go back to work. You know, they want to do the things that they have trained their lives to do the things that bring them joy and they just can't. And that's so frustrating to hear for yeah. sure. Yeah, but we, we, can, we can do that. So I, I have a bunch of webinars on YouTube on the Berkeley Life Professional page where I talk about nitric oxide and sexual function, nitric oxide and mental health, nitric oxide and immune health, really go deep inside it. Like I, I did my first nitric oxide and immune health a couple of years ago when all this started. And then a few months ago, I, I redid it. And then there's nitric oxide and EMF, where, where the EMF actually made everybody actually more prone to getting this virus. And in fact, you know, it started in Wuhan, which is one of the first 5G cities. Okay, and then it spread East Coast, West Coast, a lot of 5G there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but we can very fascinating. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on on one right now, which will be nitric oxide and immune and EMF and putting it all together. Because these last couple months, there's been a plethora of studies actually coming up showing that connection. Well, wow. and we're so attached to our devices. Right. So I'm not surprised. You know, I think that I've, I've heard in the ether, you know, there's been more discussion about EMF and really, you know, what. We, we, you know, there, there's been interesting studies about, of course, EMF with, or even just the whole device itself in, you know, 
adult, young adults and teens and development of brains and those sorts of things. But I also think that, you know, these devices that we carry around with us all the time, <laughs> they make us more lonely along with all of the other potential things that go along with that. And so I definitely think that we're going to find more and more information about how these devices impact our lives and not potentially in good ways. <laughs> You know, the, the Russians knew back in the 50s that these the electromagnetic radiation actually causes cardiovascular disease, causes diabetes. They knew that and they were trying to tell the Americans, but of course the Americans weren't listening or they were listening and they didn't want the public to know. Well, and it's hard to say, you know, what what happened back then in terms of, you know, there's all kinds of fun, interesting conspiracy theories that we can, I'm sure, go into for certain. Um, but I, I definitely um, appreciate all of your knowledge and all of the information that you have. And I, I did look at um, your um, nitric oxide and immune health YouTube video, and I thought that it was really wonderful, particularly for someone who hasn't really thought about nitric oxide pathways in a little bit. It was a really wonderful refresher and way to kind of remember again, you know, where and how these things are really impactful. Um, and so I really appreciate all of the educational resources that you are putting out there on this topic for those of us who aren't really, you know, dealing with this all the time. Well, thank you. And so, um, so let's talk a little bit about um, supplementation. So we um, we know that we can get these um, the the needed things from our diet through that green leafy veggie populate or green leafy vegetable side of life. But um, for somebody who doesn't like the taste of kale, can't really seem to get um, enough of those green leafies in their diet. Um, what kind of supplementation would you recommend? Because of course we can't just take nitric oxide, right? <laughs> we need to take the, those factors along the pathway. Well, most nitric oxide supplements, um, especially from the beginning are arginine citrulline products. However, giving arginine to somebody whose NOS is uncoupled actually can increase oxidative stress and increase your ADMA, which is not what we want because that's connected to all cause mortality. So by supporting nitrates, like Berkeley Life Professional is a professional grade nitrate supplement. It is clinically proven to raise saliva nitrate nitrite, which was correlated to blood levels nitrate nitrite, which was correlated to a decrease in blood pressure in, in hypertensive individuals. So two capsules of the Berkeley Life Supplement will give you about 320 milligrams of nitrate, which is equal to about five ounces of spinach or seven ounces of beets. And nitrates have a half-life of six to eight hours. So if you take a couple of capsules in the morning and then you add some nitrate rich veggies at lunch and dinner, you can sustain those levels to keep that nitric oxide production up and your circulation and microcirculation healthy. And then we have a, a, a saliva test strip that tests the nitrite concentration in your, in your saliva to let you know whether, you know, how, what kind of job you're doing with your vegetable intake. Mm -hmm. So you take, a, you, you measure, and I would say a good 95% of us are low. Mm -hmm. And then you take a couple of capsules and about an hour, hour and a half later, you retest and you can start seeing this strip turn a darker pink. Mm -hmm. So this is really good for, for patient compliance. Because mm -hmm. how many times do we give somebody something and they don't know if it's working? They're just taking it because you said so. Right. This way you're actually showing them, oh, this is doing something. Mm -hmm. And I think too, what's nice about the, the visual scale of it too, you know, so it has that color rating. So less color is low, more color is better. And so it does, it's like, 
I think anything that we can do to incorporate the patient into the experience, I think is going to get that buy-in from them. And so, you know, that's why when you see that number on the scale go down, it makes you feel good because you're seeing the results of what's going on. And here kind of, it's the same idea you're seeing now, okay, that strip is getting pinker as we go along. And so now we're seeing that this is actually doing something. And in addition, to probably hopefully feeling less of that brain fog, less of that others, the other sorts of symptoms that potentially could be coming along with all of this too. The fatigue, the depression, you know, all of these things that go into impaired circulation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if somebody, if uh, one of our listeners out there was interested in potentially, you know, testing themselves or um, testing or recommending a supplement or something like that for them, how would um, somebody get in touch um, with you or with your product? Well, um, the sales rep is Donna at berkeleylife.com. And you can set up like a wholesale account. I'm not really the salesperson. I, I just, I do the education, but Donna can, can, can set you up. Um, I post a lot on LinkedIn and Facebook. I take all these studies that are, are current, make the nitric oxide connection. There's a Facebook page called Berkeley Life Professional Forum where I talk about nitric oxide in nitrate supplementation. I mean, that's all that is. So just come and come and like join and let's talk nitric oxide. Wonderful. And we'll make sure to have all of the links for all of the ways to get in touch with you, Beth, um, in the show notes as well. So don't, uh, don't worry about scribbling all of that information down. We'll make sure to have all of that for you guys in the show notes. So I want to thank you so much for your time today, Beth, for this wonderful, um, very, very interesting conversation. I definitely learned a lot myself, so I really appreciate it. Um, and so thank you again for, um, um, for all of your knowledge. Um, did you have any um, last words of wisdom for our listeners today? Let's, let's keep healthy. Let's keep our brains healthy. Let's keep our circulation and microcirculation healthy. If we don't optimize that circulation and microcirculation, it really doesn't matter what else you're doing because things aren't going to get to where they need to go. So this will make whatever kind of therapy you're doing work better. Sounds great. Uh, wonderful. Thank you again Thanks. so much. Thank you.